Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It's like Ellis said, yeah, he did give me a week notice. That's fair enough. So you're good Yeah, yeah. Seven, a minute for each day. <laughs> um, I, I just know for, for me, um, this particular lesson is actually, I guess it's probably more so a lesson. Uh, the lesson is, it's really for me, realistically. Um, I just hope that maybe you guys kind of will get something out of it. Um, with the week that I've been having, and wife can say, with, with a lot of things that usually gets thrown your way with life, you always resort back to the faithfulness of God Amen. and what he's done for you. And so through, through reading the scriptures, it's more so trying to understand the faithfulness of God, understanding the faithfulness of man, the lack of faithfulness of man, and then the power of the Holy Spirit um, and understanding the faith that increases with it. So I've been reflecting a lot on the scriptures as far as understanding on, well, how is it carried out in the word? And you remember stories on the woman with the issue of blood. When she was healed, he said it was her faith that, that healed her when she touched his garment. And when you think of the reflection of when the ten virgins were healed as well, the, the ten um, lepers, when they were healed, one came back. And he was like, where are the other nine? And he told him to go. And he says, you know, your faith made you whole. Right. Amen. So you see how faith continues to grow. And, and, and that's what continues to build throughout the scripture, which is what the Lord is trying to show us as, as believers, how we have to keep that faith. And for me, that's what was kind of dealing with my mind throughout this week because of, you know, just with, just with life, you know, family, work, house expenses. And when they all build up, sometimes that lack of faith creeps in and it makes it really difficult to get through it. And, and a lot of times as, as, you know, as believers in Christ, we know. We know what the scripture says. I just gave wonderful references right. and that's, Biblical word scriptures that we know and hold true because we believe in the word of God. But when you go through life, sometimes it's, it's <laughs> you want that now <laughs> reference. <laughs> you know, you want that. I need that that now, yes. you know, refresher that, you know, and, and, it, and to me, you know, especially coming, especially coming here, <laughs> especially coming here on the Sabbath, you know, elders right, you know, getting that time to get into prayer and then just to worship. Listening to about the blessings of the Lord is, you know, presence of the Lord is here. Yes. Understanding the blessings that he's given to each of us. Amen. Understanding what we've gone through in life to just make it here and still continue on right. serving the Lord. Amen. That alone is what's continued to, to increase my faith throughout this week with everything going on. And that's why it, it still kept coming back again to... These uh, these verses that have been coming to me again, where I was trying to teach a different lesson, and it's like you know, <laughs> Amanda's like, why do you want to change your lesson with everything going on? You trying to run from it, like, <laughs> and I'm like, yes, because I just want to be upset right now. She's like, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I just want to be upset. <laughs> but again, <laughs> you know, through it all, God is still faithful. You know, he still is faithful and he will deserve it no matter what. You think about, again, Job, what Job went through. A task that I hope none of us have to deal with. But sometimes we feel like, you know, you're in a Job situation because you, you, you go through it as, as flesh. Christ says he'll never give you something you can't bear, you can't handle because he was here with us. You know, he walked this earth in fleshly body. You know, and he and he went through that tribulation of understanding the sacrifice that he has to make for us, you know, for us that we don't even know what we may end up, you know, doing. But he already knows it. So uh, I just I just want to read these scriptures and, and just kind of convey a little bit. Um, so by, by definition, faithfulness is the concept of unfailing, remaining, remaining loyal to someone or something. I'm putting the loyalty into consistent practice, regardless of um, extenuate circumstances. 
Um, and, and then it says it also, it also can mean keeping one's promises no matter the prevailing circumstances, such as God's covenant with his love of his people. Uh, I want to start off, I want to read a scripture here um, through De from Deuteronomy. It's uh, Deuteronomy 7, 6 through 9. It says, For you are people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be people for his treasured possession. Out of all the peoples who are on the face of earth, it was not because you were more in number than any other people that the Lord set his love on. <clears throat> the Lord set his love on you and chose you for you were the fewest of all peoples. But it is because the Lord loves you and is keeping the oath that he swore to your fathers, that the Lord has brought you out of the mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of, Pharaoh's, of the Pharaoh king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps the covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments a thousand generations. Look at that. <laughs> you know, God's, this, this is talking about the Pharaoh, what they went, that's past, right? What they went through in the scripture. And we know, and I, I can say, we all have different Pharaohs in our lifestyle, whether it's in the form of spiritual or a job within a person who's physically in front of us. But he, as it says here, if you keep his commandments, thousands of generations on that love is still there. God's love is still there. He promised. He made a promise with the rainbow, as we see when it rains, that he'll never flood the earth again. With, he'll never destroy the earth by water. Right. And we've seen in our lifetime, there's a lot of water devastations, but it's never destroyed the earth. Amen. A commandment, that's, that's an oath that's not been broken. Right. Right. Psalms 89, 1 through 8. And it reads, I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I said, steadfast love will be built up forever. In the heavens, you will establish your faithfulness. You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant, I will establish your offsprings forever and build your throne for all generations. Salah. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is the Lord, a God greatly to be feared in the council of the holy ones, and awesome above all who are around him? O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty as you are, O Lord, with your faithfulness all around you. 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 3 says, But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you a guard and against the evil one. I think about that scripture again all the time because you just think about just the day-to-day -day life. It just keeps hitting you and hitting you and hitting you. But you know it's just the enemy. It says he walks to and fro the earth, right. on who he can seek and destroy, who he can devour. But the only reason he can do that is because... The Lord has enough faith in us to know we have the power and authority to step on any adversary that comes against us. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. That is the only reason, which is funny, because <laughs> the Lord is going to give you a way out, right? right? And he already knows, you're, you're, you're re when reading the scripture, we know that we have our way out, but sometimes it's difficult for us as flesh. The Lord knows he gave us our way out, and the enemy knows we have a way out. Right. And that's the funny part about it. He knows we have our way out. He's just waiting for us to recognize that. Elder. Minister, can you read the next verse? Can you read it? I don't have it written now. <laughs> you talk about, about a way of escape, right? Yes. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. Hey, wow. Thank you, Lord. He well. finds his loopholes. <laughs> he 
finds his loopholes, and it's, and it's within the, the power of the Almighty and how we can get out of them. Amen. I have here um, <clears throat> Hebrews 13.8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Malachi 3.16-18 says, Then those who fear the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them, and, and a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in the day when I make up my treasured possession, and I will spare them, um, spare them as man spares his son who serves him. Then once more you shall see the dis distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. The scriptures say it right there. The Lord has a book of remembrance. He has our names written down. He knew us before we even existed. He knows the hairs on our head, on our body, everything about us. And us going through our situations, you know, it, it, it gets difficult at times, but the Lord knows. It says it right here. He has your name written down, so he knows. Don't think for a shadow of a doubt like it's, Man, I see this person all the time and what, you know, they, they, they did me wrong and or this is going on and I'm always still sitting. No, the Lord has your name written down. Yeah. His coming kingdom, that is what our hope is in and that's what yes. we need to remember. Amen. That when we trust in him, it doesn't matter what this person has or what they did to you. Right. Because your father says right here that you are going to be taken care of and he will deal with them. So, amen to that. <laughs> um, and then uh, I, I want to read here another, a, a few scriptures here that talks about uh, the faithfulness within man, of man. And it's, uh, the first one I have here is in 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 5, 6 through 9 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, <clears throat> Because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. And you kind of remember, when, you, when everybody says, who's the king of the jungle, they call it a lion, right? But who is the lion, the king, the conquering lion? <laughs> so whatever lion that, that is, we know we know the conquering lion. There's a distinction between a conquering lion. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Amen. It's funny because it says here, too, it says like a prowling lion, where the Messiah is the conquering lion. Yes. <laughs> right. Amen. Uh, verse 9 says, resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. You don't know what a person's going through. You just don't. That's why we have to be in prayer. We have to be in prayer. We have to be in prayer. Sometimes you see, you see it on the TV a lot where you see famous people take their lives. I myself look at it like, that's crazy. You have all this money and you can do whatever you want. Why would you want to do something like that? If you want to do anything, just say, man, just lock me up somewhere and just take my money, then fine. But to take your life, you can have whatever you want. But you realize money's not everything. You know, it, you don't know the situation that that person was going through for them to cause, you know, to go through that. Or just even kids nowadays, when you look at them in schools and, and the depression and the mental struggle that goes through some people, you don't know. They may put the smile on their face because they're trying to show you that everything is well. But sometimes behind all of that, there's a lot more. And that's why with every person you meet, having the Holy Spirit inside of you, you got to... you. It says, that's why I say you want to use, you want to be able to have, be able to exercise all the gifts as possible because you want to be able to be able to discern when you see somebody's hurting right, right. or be able to discern and understand that when somebody needs prayer, you have the authority that you can pray for them through that situation right. or, you know, a, a gift of a blessing. If the Lord blesses you, that you can bless that person with that need of that situation. Amen. That's why it's so important to try to exercise each one and, and try to build up on that because you don't know what somebody's going through. Um, 
Ephesians, oh, thank you, um, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works with God prepared beforehand that we sh should walk in them. Amen. Hebrews 3, 1 through 2. Therefore, holy brothers, you who share in heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and the high priest of your confession, who was faithful to him, who appointed him, just as Moses also faithful in all God's house. And I have here our Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight, and in which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Amen. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that has set before him endure the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And you think, I think about the faithfulness of man in these chapters, and then you look again, you know, with Abraham and his son Isaac, and you see all the depictions of it where it's usually like, you know, a little child who's carried up. But when you really look into the scripture, he's actually closer in the ages, like over a teenager, you know, like younger, younger than 30, but closer to in his, maybe in his 20s. So you're saying he's actually like a strong, knowledgeable young man. So for him to go through that with his father, he's having that faith of knowing, I know what the Messiah is doing. I know what my Lord has planned. So that faith that he has to trust not only his father, but to trust in God, as well as Abraham trusting in God that my son <laughs> that I love dearly, you're having me to make this, to make this sacrifice. It's, it, you see the two faithfulness of the two men, their faithfulness in that situation. Because a young, a, today you say a young man, you say, hey, Lord told me to do this. <laughs> Somebody like in our <laughs> young vitality is going to be like, no, that's not happening. But you think about it. Can you make that sacrifice? And for that child, or not really child, but for that young man to have that mentality to make that sacrifice. To understand the faithfulness of God to say, you know what? This is my life, but I'm going to trust you, Father, with this. So, mm -hmm. when you think about what um, here Isaac was, he was the promise. He was like, he was like the promise manifesting. Here he is, the thing we've been waiting for. We were told that we would have a child. Here we are, really old, and now we're like super old. Yeah. <laughs> so this word, this promise that God gave Abraham, it's like, okay, I knew I promised you and your seed would light up the earth and it'd be like like the sand of the sea and the stars of the sky. Now go ahead and kill it. Yeah. yeah. It's just that Abraham was so faithful. He was willing to give God the very promise that he gave him back. Yeah. And because of that, like God really blessed him. Yeah. And do you think that, I mean, Abraham had to know that what God says he Mm -hmm. Keeping a promise, God's not going to say something to be like, "Oh yeah, I'm going to renege on that," you know, right. scratch. Well, we don't. <laughs> right? No, no. no yeah, no, yeah. I really do believe Abraham believed that he would have, yeah. that he would have raised Isaac up and yeah. slain him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this guy killed Buck. So yeah. Yep. Well, I think Abraham, and that's why I think Abraham's called the friend of God in the scriptures. I think he's the only one called the friend of God, right? Abraham. The, the, yeah, that I know. Of, yeah. I think he referred to mm -hmm. him literally as Other God's than the friend. Disciples after. Right. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. The Old Testament for sure. Um, but I think that's the kind of faith Abraham had is that he knew that God would raise him up if he had to. Right. That's some crazy faith. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, man. Not too many people are that big. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
which which brings me to this uh the next few verses that was coming up which was like the lack of faithfulness proverbs 20 it says five through seven the purpose in a man's heart is like deep water but a man of understanding would draw it out many a man proclaims his own steadfast love but a faithful man who can find the righteous who walks in his integrity blessed are his children after him and in jeremiah 17 9 the heart of is deceitful above all things and is de desperately sick yeah. who can understand it that is that is a struggle as flesh that we all go through which is why it's so important it says we have to die daily yeah. you have to crucify that flesh yeah. because without it that that flesh will rise up your your heart as in a <laughs> being as a I love this, I feel this, I, 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 I want this, but the Lord knows what you need. The Lord knows what you need. Yeah. Yes. What was the verse before that? Proverbs something? Proverbs 20. And I read from 5 and 7. I read 5 and 7. Mm-hmm. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then, it will, I, and then I, will I declare to them, I n never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. That in itself tells you that there is a, there's going to be people who do have faith, but their level of faith is what's required. The level of faith here and understanding of what God is really asking for these people to do is what's really going to separate them. Because if you look at it, it says those workers of lawlessness, they're not keeping his laws. They have a faith, they have an understanding, but they're not understanding what he's telling them that they should really be doing within their walk and their obedience. Exactly, exactly. Uh, it was Deuteronomy 7, 6, and 9. Which goes perfect with, with the verse 9 that you had brought out. It says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Perfectly. <clears throat> Amen. Matthew 17. 18 through 21 reads, And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the boy was healed instantly. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? He said to them, Because of, because of your little faith. For truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you you got to think about it. these disciples walked with jesus everywhere they were with him day and night right. and the fact that they're saying i don't understand why can't i do these things and the lord had to call it out it's because your lack of faith you can go down a, a trail follow you can i mean you can be part of a belief but if you don't have that faith that understanding of faith, that press, that press on, that press on, it, you're gonna, you're gonna lack somewhere. It's gonna be, it's gonna, it's gonna lack somewhere. And the only way you can get that increase in faith is through the Holy Spirit and asking God to continue to revitalize you, to renew you, to allow you to grow and to exercise it. You have to exercise that faith. If you're not pressing on and exercising your faith, that's where you start to lack. And I think, if anything, you look at it as disciples, Jesus was the one walking around doing all these miracles at first. So they're just watching him like, oh, what's up? He's got it. He's got it. I'm just going to sit back here and just watch him work. 
And then it realized afterwards, well, I tried it. It didn't work. How come it didn't work? Did you exercise your faith? When was the last time you got into your prayer closet and really started proclaiming some things in your life that you know, I need this delivered. I need this worked out. I'm guilty of that, which is why I'm reading this to you all today, because I need to get back into that same mindset. So, you know, what? this is bothering me too long. I need to start exercising some crazy faith and saying, I need this taken care of. I need this removed. I need this family member delivered. I need this friend of mine healed. That's where we have to start operating in and, and, and speaking and claiming into. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, like I said, this is this is for me. This is for me. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. Uh, the next the next few verses I have here is uh, faithfulness through the Holy Spirit. Galatians five twenty two. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed, and you shall refute every tongue that rises against you in the judgment. This is the heritage. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their benediction or righteousness from me declares the Lord. We have a heritage, guys. That's what's so awesome when I read that scripture. When you, have a, when you say heritage, it's generations. It's culture brought down from generations, and it's, and it's instilled within you. When you, have, when you think about, I think about, like, when I, say, when I say heritage for me, for me personally, in the physical, I think about my family coming from the Caribbean and, and then the food and the culture. And those are things that it's with, instilled within me. <laughs> The food and the culture. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's instilled within me, and then I try to do the same, instill that heritage in my family, in my kids. And you try to bring that through. And that lineage goes all the way down. Look at what's <laughs> So you look at it again. When it says, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, the Lord's heritage, the kingdom that he has that he's preparing for us. All of the blessings, all of the joy to come with it. Hallelujah. I'm thinking, oh, that's such a good thing to think about. That that, our physical culture, when this body goes and all this worldly things goes, the heritage of our Christ, our Savior, our Messiah is within us. Oh, bless his name. Elder. Mm -hmm. Once you're baptized and you're walking in Christ, mm -hmm. that's not your heritage anymore. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Your Amen. heritage is the heritage of James and Peter. Right. Your right. heritage is the heritage of the saints that you worship with. Mm -hmm. right, right. Amen. It said also that God will vindicate them. Mm -hmm. That all the tongues of everybody that's, that's spoken out against you, he will silence this. Now, that's your heritage. Yes. Justice, basically in a roundabout way, justice. Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians <clears throat> chapter three, seventeen through eighteen says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Romans 5, 1 through 5 says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. 
and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Romans 8, 14 through 17. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children that heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provide we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. I, I just so reading, reading through the scriptures and understanding the different levels and, and then getting to on how important as well as, as I just read through the faithfulness of the Holy Spirit, using the Holy Spirit in everything, govern, the governance of Christ, understanding importantly how we need to continue to pray. We need to continue to just be encouraging and uplifting to one another because being faithful to, to God, faithful to each other, and through the Holy Spirit, understanding that, that's what's allowing us to continue to press on Amen. until his coming kingdom. Right. So I, I, reading, reading through this, this is what you know, the Lord's kind of been working with me and dealing with me throughout this week on. And I just wanted to share that with you all today.